it feels dark. It feels heavy when you say that. But it's, I, that's been my experience, that it's accurate, is that the reason people change is because of pain. The reason we grow is because we get uncomfortable and we embrace being uncomfortable. But being honest with the pain that we feel is usually the prime mover for people to do the work that is necessary to push to the edge. And in the space of world leading athletics and arts and business, everybody works hard. Right? And some people work smarter, but everybody works hard. So there's a balance in modern time right now about running to the edge and then properly recovering. So why would somebody run to the edge? To, their, to the capacity that they have within themselves. So yes, but when we talk about capacity, we're talking about emotional capacity, mental capacity. Long gone are the days where it's just physical capacity. Like you can get your heart rate up relatively easily and and that is the old way it's still relevant but that is an old way to think about capacity building that's not the case anymore and what we do is we spend time working to understand the strengths of people we want to understand where they want to go and how they want to be on that going in their life so that's like setting a vision okay so there's a difference between pain and suffering there is a difference between there. We're, we're all suffering. We all have suffering. We all have an emptiness or a dark place or corners inside of our spirit and our mind that are not fulfilled and watered and full. Like we, we all can relate to that. And when I'm talking about pain, I'm not necessarily talking about suffering, but acknowledging our suffering, being in touch with the pain, that's enough to say, I, when you're really honest, that's enough to say, I can't do this. I don't want to do this anymore. Like this is not the person I want to become and be on a regular basis. If that's the case, if that assumption is right, then as a loved one, my job is to help you get real and experience those places as often as you can so that you make the, the declaration to say, no, 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 that's not okay for me to feel and be this way on a regular basis. So let me pull on that thread just a little bit further. It is healthy and necessary to feel all of the human emotions. When you ask people, what do you want in life? Most people say, I want to be happy. Wait, hold on now. If grandma dies, do you want to be happy? That's it, like, really? When your child is sick, do you want to be happy? No, 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 I think the answer is that we want to feel all of the human experience to its fullest, but never lose ourselves in it, but to experience all of it. And so, we're getting into the weeds of some very esoteric and um, non-scientific thinking right now, but the practice is that if I care about you deeply, the mistake I can make in your life is to help you feel like it's all okay. Like, oh, it's okay. It's okay that you're drinking and driving and you killed a 14-year-old. That's no problem. Like, you'll do better next time. No, the, the, the work is to say, well, what's this like for you? to feel that pain, so you make the commitment to say, no, 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 <laughs> I can't do this anymore. And that's when it becomes really real. We want to be around people that somehow give us the sense that, God, when I'm around that person, I don't know, they just, I just feel better, they make me better somehow. Let's say it's you and me, and what I want to feel from you is that you've got my back, you understand me, and that when you're making decisions, it's not just for you, it's for me as well. And so a rising tide floats all boats. The relationships that go wrong or sour is if I'm on the side of this relationship, I'm like, do I trust that he's making these thoughts or, or moves because it's right for him or me? And the, the sour relationships are the one where it's really just good for you and I'm just casualty in your, in your experience. So what we do ahead of time is we invest in the relationship. So for example, the Seattle Seahawks, um, the product is football. So just like a business, you've got products for your businesses as well. And, but we are a relationship-based organization. Is if Coach Carroll was here, he'd say, that's how we run the organization, a relationship-based organization, and the output is football. And that, we found that to be incredibly valuable because we don't do, none of us do this thing alone. And if we're really gonna go the distance and really step into the frontier to do the amazingly difficult, challenging things, we need to lock arms to stay in the trenches long enough. And what happens for most people is we lock arms, we say, oh yeah, let's go get it. 
and then we lock arms. And as soon as it's hard, the brain kicks in and the survival mechanisms in the brain are stronger than the thriving mechanisms. So the survival mechanisms of the brain light up and what do we do? We save our own ass and we unlock our arms and we take care of ourselves. That is how people fray in rugged and stressful environments, emotionally stressful environments. We unlock. And so the extraordinary able to stay the course, locked arms, because they're mission-minded, they're really clear about what they want to experience, and they bet on each other. You know, we'd like to think that we, all, we are all a pebble in a pond. And so the, the, the weight of the pebble indicates the ripples in the out, output, you know, the effect. And those inner circle, like there's a greater impact, and then as you spread out, you know, especially through social media, there's larger impacts. But yeah, it is available. Like you're in relationships in every community that you're in. And like, I don't know if you have spent the time to articulate your philosophy and to be able to get it in maybe 25 words or less, maybe down to four, three or two, one word, you know? And so that type of work, investing on the clarity that you have within yourself, allows us to have a greater weight in that pebble. And so from clarity, we can train our mind to have conviction in stressful environments. And the clarity also allows other people to know really what we're about. And then when we ask them what they're about, that that's how you start to build that deeper bond, right? And what I've found is that most people want to stay on the surface because it's hard to talk about things that are hard to talk about. And there's like three levels, right? You can talk about, I don't know, beer and pizza, you know, and sporting event scores. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just some type of relationships. And then underneath, there's other conversations which are about ideas that are hard to articulate. And then underneath of that, it's talking about personal experiences that are hard to articulate. And those are kind of the three levels of depth that, that I think most conversations get bucketed in. It's not easy. You know, intimate relationships are challenging. And because the person that we're talking about knows you and knows if the, if the relationship is really rich, almost all of you. I'm not sure as a, as a human, somebody, this might sound sad, but I don't think that another person, even in the most intimate relationships, can know all of another person. So there is a loneliness to the human experience that I think is important just to honor. And that doesn't mean I'm by any means depressed. Like there's a vibrancy about how I view life and engage in life, but there's also like this honesty, you know, about the, the lonely part. So what happened in our relationship is that I was ripping and running, figuring out, I was in the study mode, big time study mode of the science of psychology. And I had some early budding successes that were taking place. And essentially I was not watering the relationship and I was being selfish. And that thirst I had for understanding the science and the application of the science of psychology was out watering the, the intimacy and relationships uh, of that relationship. So one day she came home and it, this, looking back, it was, I was surprised by it, but looking back, <laughs> all the telltale signs were there. You know, for a long time, she'd been saying, hey, um, pay attention like to the relationship. But I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I really thought it was all fine, but it wasn't. And so finally one day she just, it was, you know, a, the most candid conversation and she just grabbed me. We've been dating since high school. And she grabbed me, you know, not, not forcefully, but grabbed my attention and she said, as a friend, as your best friend, I'm telling you, this doesn't work anymore. I love you, you're a wonderful person, but I can't figure out how to be me in this relationship. And so I was like, holy, like that's the worst thing that a friend could say to you, like the worst. And so it, that, and I was like, no, 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 no. And she like, okay, okay, I, I feel you now. And she's like, no, 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 it's too late. 